Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of Know the Facts. My guest tonight is uh, Dr. Hav Harvey Claremont. He's, he's known as Wet Water Claremont with that hat. Uh, we got a lot of issues, especially he does, and I have some issues here that I have. I found out, and you know, just listening to different people and getting phone calls. Jesus, if I had to pay for the phone, it would be, a mer I'd be up to thousand. Uh, I hope you would. Uh, I hope you would uh, sit down and, and understand what a, what, what some of the issues are. But, uh, but whatever happens, it happens. Okay, uh, Shrewsbury is a small town. That's why little issues become big issues. Everything takes money, but in this town, you go to the finance committee, and as the school committee does, cry big tears, and they get what they want, what to do, and everything else. But they do a song and dance and big tears if a group of a group of its leaders should not, should and get normal people to take their places. And there's a lot of normal people out there. This group, this group here, I don't know what happens to these people. They think they're so special. They get elected or appointed on a board and they think they're t t you can't look at them, you can't touch, touch them, you can't even say their name. Well, who the hell are they? They're normal people like everyone else. They walk on the street. And if and uh, the way I look at it, if they know you, they can at least say, hey, how you doing? It doesn't have to be the other way. But no, they got, I'll carry a sourpuss and they sneak things in and lies. All the lies about their phony programs they're starting so they can uh, mail them to uh, Boston. But they are sneaks. There's no question about it. Uh, uh, when you look at what they are doing, it's make-believe. In one big lie they created, I don't care if you believe me or not, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big phony production in 2014. When two and a half was passed, in 2014 was passed, education money went to the superintendent, who that's how we got a raise, through education money. And sure, the money for the kids, He's a real sneak about it. Okay. Wiki person. He calls himself a professional? Yeah. Professional extortionist. What we have is issues on top of issues. Water problem, water chemicals. We don't need new schools. In addition to the high school, one big lie. T ten classrooms, and I was there when he stated that. Uh, but when, that's, when the high school was open, all of them, even the school committee says, this is what we're going to have for the, forever. We don't have to touch this school. Well, if you people are dopey enough to vote for 10 classrooms, you deserve it. And at 1.5 million gallons a day or a week, 49% of the elected or appointed should be gone. They may make people sick, but that's all right. They're, they pat them on the back and get a good job. What's going on when all you butt kisses change their mind? Does anything... Does any, anyone say to themselves, what do we need a two and a half for? A disgusting superintendent and, and the committee that makes stories and phony and rotten answers. Uh, uh, also at the coffee shop, we have all the coffee heroes. Some of them are board and committee members. At some of the coffee shops, they say they could save the school system and they hate me, they want to beat me up. Let them, I could care less. All kinds of money like hell they did. Keep donating money and what the people what the people in question are jerks. You want the truth. Listen to my show like a like a email I received and a man watching my show with his uh, eight year old grandchild. No class idiot. That really makes a lot of sense watching us watching my show with his grandson. No sense at all. No sense at all. Uh, no, no, no class idiot. There could be a, sh there could be in a show any kind except Cinderella or six blind d dummies. No, no people, excuse me. There are people involved more than in two selectmen, the whole finance committee, and they put earplugs and blinders on the t on the town manager. Also, Donna O'Connor thinks she's something. What is it? What is it? She's, she's a nosy person, two faced and uh, not a lady at all, that a group of monkeys, uh, selectmen, 
and DePaulo and Casavant. Uh, she looks for the answer uh, through him. That's her big shot, idol. That's all right. Why don't why don't you back up what you say? I am right here. Doubt I doubt it. You 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 DePaulo, hey, you have what makes you so smart in reading the t town manager's letters and correspondence. The town manager is in the smart one, is the smart one. Not you, when you when is the police station to be built. When you open your mouth, uh, it's been opened too much. The only good the only good thing you say, uh, the only good people on a, a selectman are Mr. Kane and Mr. LeBeau. How businesses have you put under? How many businesses have you put under? Well, I would say about five. I would say about five, uh, yeah. Uh, people of Shrewsbury, you have a better, better, better vote on a, uh, you b better not vote on a new school we don't need. The library was bad enough. The articles and the kind of mistakes in the library. I'm on my last page. Oh, sorry. Am I? Uh, one more. Uh, they are the worst ones. The library is a daycare center. The only thing delivered there is formulas, diapers, and dressing tables. We pay for that vote. Just for the police station, the most important building in the town, not a add-on. The school in question at the center is perfectly fine. It, it, uh, a, couple, a couple of years ago, they put a brand new sprinkler system in and a brand new fire system installed. So what are they gonna do if they knock down the building? Destroy all the new stuff that's been put up there? This town has really got no brains whatsoever. No brains at all. And if Bobby Cox has it going, he's got no brains either. Knocking down, a brand new system's knocking them out, yeah. Like somebody should knock you out. Uh, 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 all you big shots, phonies can't have everything and stop bashing the seniors. Some of them made shoes be what it is today. And now leave them alone. They make, they, they have more brains in one finger than you all. We have a good, good board, zoning, planning, consignment commission, and many others. We don't, we don't uh, have phonies, but you all are. Uh, 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 all done. Some of the people in the finance community want a piece of me. Well, come on, it's uh, quarter past two. I'm down the, uh, I'm down the, uh, uh, what do you call, it? Parker Road Center here. Come on in. See if you have, see if you're fast, see if you're quick enough. Uh, also, come on. I know ladies who could kick your asses without raising a sweat. Stick all the schools up the, up in the direction of north. Want the direction is the only saying. One rotten apple kills the rest. How true we want. How true. We, we were spelled to out uh, that it is not a question of a brain uh, between you all. You want tough, go where I go during the day. Uh, uh, the day all, all you think of is the, the, all the officials think of when they build something, they want their name on a bronze plaque right by the front door. Well, isn't that too bad? Well, put it up and I'll take it down with a grinder. Uh, you don't deserve nothing in front of the building. Maybe a outhouse is better. The town is too good for all of you. You did nothing to make it that way. What what restaurant do you have your second meeting at? Go ahead and I will find you with the per proper people. How, have you been notified? You will be gone by then. Thank you. Uh, go ahead. All right. Go ahead, Claire. Very uh, good, very good. Uh, I wanted to talk to people a little bit about uh, something they're going to find in the stores now, even more so now in 2020. And I want to prepare you for it. I want to get you all prepared for it. I'm talking here about plant-based food. Now, yuppies love it. Get rid of all the meat. Get rid of the meat. You want to, we don't want any red meat. We don't want any meat at all. We want to be like the people in Loma Linda. You know, they have a seven to eight year longevity over us. Why? Because most of them are Seventh-day Adventists. And yes, they are vegetarians, but they don't smoke, they don't drink, they exercise daily. They stay in their community. That's wonderful, but you can't say that it's because of the lack of red meat that they're healthier, that they live longer. Well, that's 
unfortunately, what the manufacturers are saying. So now they're getting into this plant-based food. I want to talk to you a little bit about it. Up the street, Burger King. They got the Impossible Burger. Impossible. Well, it's impossible if you eat it, I'll tell you. All they mention is that it tastes just like beef. Excuse me, Doc. Sure. McDonald's just started their plant-faced food yep, today. And they're, and they they're using... Like 2,000 commercials on the television. And they're, and they're using the Beyond Burger. That's what they yeah, use. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. We're going to talk about both of them. Yeah. Talk about both of them. First, the Impossible Burger. Are you familiar at all with Roundup? That pesticide that Monsanto made that got a huge suit? They just paid $2 billion in, uh, uh, with that suit wow. because of a thing called glyphosate, which is the pesticide that's in Roundup that caused lymphomas in people. They tested the Impossible Burger and the Beyond Burger for glyphosate. Now, the quotes... And, and you have to take it with a grain of salt because this is the FDA quotes, and you know the FDA is not not too bright up no, here, you know. No, no. But they set the limit at 0 0.1 microgram of the glyphosate. In the Impossible Burger, they found 11.1 micrograms wow. of glyphosate. You don't see anything in the papers about that. All the papers do is extol all the values of these so-called plant-based burgers. Well, let me tell you, it's just that alone would scare me the hell out of there. They tested to the Beyond Burger. That had only one microgram. So that's better, but still 10 times what the limit is. Still 10 times. So. What's the difference between those two, the Impossible Burger and the Beyond Burger? The big difference is that the Impossible Burger takes some of the, what they call a hemoglobin from the soy plant. Hemoglobin is, we all have hemoglobin. It carries oxygen in our bloodstream. Well, it does the same type of thing for the plant. It allows the plant to get the nutrients in, in the roots. Well, it happens to be red, and you got a red burger. Wonderful. You want to get away from red meat, but you put red stuff in your damn burger, you know? <coughs> so how do you, <laughs> it, it's really ridiculous. Well, they also analyzed these burgers for other things, too. If you look at the ingredients, especially on this Beyond Burger, all the ingredients, 26 different Chemicals, chemicals in the Beyond Burger. I never heard of half of them. Never heard of them. Well, let's analyze them a little bit. I looked into them. What the heck? Let me go through a few of them for you. Soy protein isolate. Well, who ever heard of soy protein isolate? Not too many people. But if you're a man, your sperm count's going to go down if you eat a burger every day. Sperm count goes down. Your libido goes down. Whoa. It works as a phytoestrogen. You know what estrogen is, a female hormone. If I was given Bob female hormone, his breasts would get bigger, testicles get smaller. He wouldn't, he wouldn't have to shave. Not a good thing, not a good thing. I would not want to sit next to him if he were taking too many of these phytoestrogens. So, that's only one ingredient, soy protein isolate. There's caramel color. Well, what's wrong with caramel? Everybody loves caramel. That's not caramel color. Caramel color is different. It contains sulfites. It contains ammonia. Wow. And also, did you know that caramel color is in Coke and Pepsi? Yep. I bet you didn't. Or if you did, you just saw it on a label, didn't know what the heck was that. What is that? But you got to get a little more evidence. You've got to look up this stuff. 
You don't just accept what they give you. Let's go on. Yeast extract. Well, you know what that is? MSG. And you know about MSG. You know that it causes symptoms in some people who are susceptible to MSG. They get severe headaches, nausea, people who have trouble and originally with, with the uh, uh, Asian food. Why with Asian food? Well, Asian food used a lot of that. It comes from seaweed, MSG. It comes from seaweed, red seaweed. That's what it comes from. And so they used a lot of this in the uh, Chinese and Japanese restaurants and all uh, because it's a good preservative and it added to the flavor of the uh, food. So that's why people were getting it originally in restaurants like that. But now, unless it's 99% MSG, our wonderful FDA tells them you don't have to put that on the label. Well, wonderful. So what they put on the label are things like yeast extract, which really means MSG. They may put some type of glutamate on the label, MSG. They may put hydrolyzed something on the label. That's MSG. So they, they fool you deliberately, deliberately fool you and not tell you that they're putting MSG into that food. Roughly 60% of all the foods out there have something like this in them and the people don't even realize it. Let's go on from there. Carrageenan. Now that's a wonderful name. I could hardly pronounce it at first, carrageenan. I mentioned it at home to my son. He works in a lab. He, he works with the, uh, the rats and all. <coughs> and he said, carrageenan, I use that to induce inflammation in the rats so that we can study them. I said, holy shit. You know, <laughs> induce inflammation. That's carrageenan. And carrageenan also has some MSG in it as well. Another ingredient, titanium dioxide. Well, who knows about that? Oncologists know because it's a carcinogen, for God's sakes. So, going through all these things in that burger. This is a Beyond Burger now. All these different things makes me sick. Actually makes me sick. I would not want my family eating plant-based burgers, either the Impossible Burger or the uh, Beyond Burger. And I know now that not just Burger King, McDonald's is coming out with it too. Last year they did some tests uh, in Canada and in Australia, put it into a bunch of restaurants. People loved it, wonderful. Now they're introducing it here with a big splash on TV and, and all. If you eat it, you're nuts. Let's go on. Like I said, 2020 is going to be more plant-based stuff in the, uh, in the stores. What I did is I just downloaded a few of them, just a few of them, just to see the types of things that are going to be out there. You're going to have eggs. You're going to have not just the burgers, but the hot dogs. You're going to have beef, poultry. Oh, the chicken. Wonderful looking chicken. To no chicken in it, obviously, but all hydrolyzed proteins. Good stuff, good stuff. Shrimp, shrimp's going to come out too. Vegan shrimp, look at that. They made it into a, a, a form of a shrimp. If you want to eat this stuff and be subjected to all these different chemicals that you don't even know about, Go ahead and eat it. Go ahead and eat it. But don't complain to me or to the oncologist you see when you get your cancer. Don't complain. You're doing it yourself. I'm warning you already about this stuff. Okay. Let's also talk about some other things. Because remember, this is no the facts. These are the facts. These are the facts. Not bullshit. This is the fact. I want to talk to seniors specifically about this one. Do you know that if you had soup in a sandwich, let's say you had a, a can of soup, 
And let's say you had, you made yourself a ham sandwich. Okay. Do you know what's in that processed deli meat? No, you don't. There's no label they put onto that little pack that you buy, the half a pound or whatever of the ham or the, or the turkey breast or whatever. You, you don't know what's in it. Well, I'm gonna tell you what's in it. I'm gonna tell you what a ham sandwich has in it, and I'm gonna tell you what Campbell's Soup, which is the most popular brand soup, what they have in it. One can, one can of Campbell's chicken noodle soup. One can. Now this is not the, the dietary soup, it's not the chunky soup, the regular can of chicken noodle soup has 890 <laughs> milligrams of sodium in it. 890 milligrams of sodium. How much sodium should you take in per day? Well, you should take in less than a teaspoon a day, less than a teaspoon a day of salt, 2,300 milligrams. Recommended between 1,500 and 2,300 per day. Now if you have that can of soup, look a little further. That 890 milligrams of sodium is per serving. And in that can of soup, there's two and a half servings. So you multiply that 890 times <laughs> two and a half. Now you're up to 2,200 milligrams of sodium just for the can of soup. Let's say you have a sandwich now. Say you have a ham sandwich. Well, and I told you now that with that ham, there's a certain number of milligrams, and it's always per serving now, per serving. Uh, what's a serving of deli meat? Two ounces. Two ounces of deli meat is what would be a serving. Well, usually you put a couple of slices of ham on your, on your sandwich. Well, how many milligrams of sodium do you think you have? Well, it's 520 milligrams per serving. Add the 520, to the 2,200, you're already beyond what you should take in for sodium for the day. And you haven't even put the butter on the damn slice of bread. You haven't counted the sodium that's in the bread. You haven't counted anything that you put onto that, like if you put mustard or whatever. All these other things have sodium you'll be well over 3,000 milligrams of sodium by the time you have your soup and sandwich. Now isn't that something? All you people who are on salt restricted diets, you should never go beyond 1,500 milligrams. That's it. You only need about 900 milligrams. You only need that. The closer you are to that, the better off you are. So you can see, you're three times already, just with your soup and sandwich, three times the amount of sodium you should be taking in. And then you go to the doctor's office and scratch your head and say, I don't know why I'm swelling up and I don't know why I'm in a little failure. I watch my salt, I don't, I don't add salt. Well, you don't have to add salt when you're eating crap like this. You're getting more just eating that one little meal for lunch. So. I always have a little rant about, about the darn salt. So those were the two big items that I wanted to talk to you about today. The other thing, I couldn't let it go. The things that the manufacturers are putting onto the labels of their food, like the MSG, for example, how they can deceive you like this, putting down all sorts of different things, not calling it what it really is. But the FDA says it's okay. It's okay if you only have less than 99% of the MSG. Wonderful, wonderful. How they can deceive you. 
And you know how many different things they can put on that label for MSG, for example? I've got the whole list. There's a list of 25 different things they can call it. All of the different glutamates, all of the different hydrolyzed things that they can call whatever it is to deceive you that they're not using MSG. This isn't the only thing that they do to deceive you like this. They deceive you like this also, uh, for example, on the saturated fats. Now, how can they deceive you? They have to tell you saturated, unsaturated. <laughs> they get you there too, because if you see hydrolyzed on there, they won't tell you what that means. Hydrolyzed whatever, I don't care whatever. Hydrolyzed, that means it's creating trans fats. Trans fat. At least you probably got that ensconced in your brain that that's not a good thing, trans fat. Saturated fat isn't that bad, but it isn't good for you either. So they deceive you and they call it hydrolyzed whatever. So manufacturers are getting away with this stuff all the time, and it's getting worse. That's why I started the whole thing that I'm talking about with these impossible and beyond burgers. Totally don't get sucked in. Don't get sucked in by this. Okay. You got anything else, Bob? Uh, no, not really. I just, uh... Well, then why don't we go on? Sure. <laughs> I read an one. interesting article. We only have one minute. Okay. I read an interesting article the other day. 17 carcinogenic foods you eat every day. Well, obviously that piqued my interest. I wanted to see how long I had to live, you know? So, what are these things? What are all these carcinogenic things? And what does it actually mean to be carcinogenic? It doesn't mean that A goes to B. In other words, they can't show that the food directly causes cancer. But, it appears that there is a definite risk eating those foods, a definite risk to causing a particular cancer. That's all that means. So you can pull this up online as well. And it's basically all of the different things, 17 different things that you may be eating that are carcinogenic. It's time that we begin to think about like the Seventh-day Adventists and Loma Linda. I don't mind living seven to eight years longer. I think that's a great thing. But you yourself have to take that responsibility. You yourself look into what you're taking, what you're eating, what you're drinking, especially the damn water in the community. You've got to keep tabs on that as well or put that purification system in your house. Okay. I think I've ranted enough. We gotta, well, we're done. We're done. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you for watching Notifax, and I hope uh, I hope Dr. Claremont uh, brought out some very interesting facts. You should listen and write them down for your better health. Thank you and good night. Very good.